I didn't really get round to thinking about my talk till uh, five o'clock this morning. Uh, but the, the title came to me in a flash. And I don't know uh, whether people can, uh, that were present yesterday at our uh, session on obstetrics will guess why I include the Maasai in this uh, uh, title. But uh, the most important thing that we heard yesterday, as far as I'm concerned, is the safety of maintaining vitamin D levels at more than 100 nanomoles per litre. And if that is what the Maasai, who are exposed to sun for 12 hours or so a day, uh, all the year round, can manage and survive on, then I suspect uh, this could well be what should be the, the norm. Uh, and we certainly are far from the norm in this country. Um, now, why I t tested uh, Gus on the, uh, his views about the Helicobacter story and his uh, idea of cancer and information is that I have become increasingly certain that it is cancer is the product of failure to heal minor wounds, super infected with anaerobes in the climate of vitamin D deficiency. And this is what I'd like to try and prove to you today. And I'm sure not many of you have read this data, uh, 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 this paper, in terms of the vitamin D hypothesis, because the, uh, there was no response to my correspondence in the, uh, over this article. And despite repeated efforts to get con contact with the author, uh, who's UCH, I've had no response. But I feel that this... Hmm? You're probably all sick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, I, I felt that this hits the vitamin D hypothesis and confirms my title. And the data that I'm going to put, point out, uh, but the data is psychiatric sick note. Uh, and its association uh, 10 to 15 years later with cancer increased risk of mort cancer mortality of a hazard ratio of 2.5. Now, SAD, seasonal affective disorder, is laughed at. Uh, but I think it has really significant long-term effect if it's over a lifetime. And where better to get it than as a 7 o'clock in the morning commuter from the, the suburbs uh, getting home at 7 o'clock at night and never seeing the sun while you slave over the office desk. And that's fine for us sort of in uh, Britain when we have had a little bit of education from the Victorian era about the, the disasters of the uh, slums. But it's not been heard in Africa. It's not been heard in China. And we're seeing vitamin D deficiency illness mounting. Hypertension in China is a particularly uh, relevant thing, but there's, there's, there's um, TB and there's diabetes. And nobody has uh, tackled this issue of vitamin D and H the deficiency in promulgation of the HIV epidemic uh, 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 and so on. So I feel that this tiny little observation, uh, I, clearly I, I don't uh, I think the trouble with me is that I tend to make far-reaching conclusions from the very limited data. However, I'd like to take you through the journey that's got me there. Um, I was a, a sort of immunotherapist at, at one stage in my, my life, but it started first when I saw excess of uh, tumours in transplant survivors when I was doing HLA matching for kidney transplants. And so I was a, a, have been a lifelong supporter of McFarlane Burnett's, but I put in Mune in inverted commas because I, I think that it's been very much more difficult to, to prove that it's T cell deficient uh, immunity. I think there are other mechanisms for which the possible vitamin D in non uh, T cell mediated responses may be relevant. So this was in the sort of the, the 19, late 60s, 70s when I was working in this area. Um, and then I went through 
treating and curing testis cancer, which was a, a, a joy of my life, and uh, the, one really did see the benefits of chemotherapy. But I began to abandon chemotherapy when I, I put this letter into The Lancet, suggesting that the, based on the exercise and prevention of cancer observations, that exercise uh, fr from puberty was probably better than uh, screening for breast cancer, let alone bowel and uh, prostate. And uh, that um, this was uh, obviously somewhat, again, a rather large leap. Um, but th then came all the, the data on the, the geography and sunshine hypothesis. And then the prostate cancer, particularly its uh, lack of correlation with blood levels, uh, but uh, its correlation with lifelong exposure to sunshine that actually came together. And then the HIV epidemic taught us that circ lack of circumcision uh, produced uh, anaerobes under the foreskin that track up the urethra and, and get into scars of, from STDs in the prostate. Uh, and suddenly the, sort of the, the, the story came together. Uh, and of course, this was also related to the high incidence of prostate cancer in the Afro-Caribbeans and demonstration in 1982 that you need six times the sun exposure to get a level of vitamin D. Uh, uh, we've discussed catalysis thiodine and then uh, some, uh, Michael Marmot and the civil service health inequality. And then uh, sunshine and exercise, are they confounding variables or is it all due to vitamin D or is it all due to exercise? Because nobody has actually studied these separately and looked at the, the synergistic action. And so my retirement job is trying to develop an index of fitness, of outdoor fitness, uh, f for schools, universities, and over 50s Olympiad, which we'll come to. So, cancer and, and <coughs> immune surveillance. We're taught these days about cancers being, to everything that causes cancer, takes at least 10 to 50 years before it manifests. And I think that's, it's understandable when you see that there's sort of random mutations which are necessary to, to do fairly complex things which are part of the normal embryology. But basically, you have got to get a whole series of different stages of mutation before you can get a cancer. Now, the, the key paper in my sort of uh, tumor immunology and HLA field was this paper, which has not been repeated, and virtually nobody else has made any comment on it. But it shows Basically, if you look at tumors that arise in transplant recipients, they do not lose HLA antigens, while the spontaneous tumors, more than 75 or 80% do. So what that tells me is that first, one of the first changes in the, the generation of escape for spontaneous tumors is neutralizing the T cell mechanism. And that, that, that means that if you're going to do anything about eliminating cancer, you've got to get in at the beginning, which means puberty. And that's why I'm focusing on exercise in the schools. Now, here is the, the, the most interesting, or the, the, the most seminal, I think, paper on exercise, because it's total cancer uh, uh, risk. And, and it's the same as it is for the three major cancers. Uh, this was a slight exception, but, uh, uh, but nonetheless, the reduction, uh, and I think that that tells us, although, of course, we, it's a it's pretty small amount of data, even though it's 7,000 odd uh, people, uh, to say that it's relevant to all malignant transformation. Now, it's a big leap to say that, but I think it, it is relevant, as much relevant as it is to say that the vitamin D in and so on might also be the same thing. So against this background, just look at the statistics about screening. Uh, and I mean, I've, I've been a, a total uh, head in the sand uh, ostrich about PSA screening. I think it's totally wasted. And this data that came out after sort of 20 years of sort of trying to persuade people to do screening and, and op operations on prostate, showing that, that you save one life uh, 
when you screen 14, 000, uh, 1,400 people with, with the PSA screening over te ten, 10 years, you treat 48 extra cancers that would not have uh, actually presented. And you, more importantly, make 250 people worried well for... You know, uh, and th it's a sin of statistics for breast and cervix, but of course they've got away with it because basically the, the women have told to shut up or, you know, uh, they, they, I mean, my wife would never go to a breast screening. She said the way they squeeze, squeeze her breast was nothing. And I've a lot of the, the Muslims and so on will not go near a cervical screening. So it's, and, and that's really why I went to exercise as a potentially ben more beneficial approach to uh, cancer prevention. And then uh, I got my daughter going down the uh, uh, gold mines in South Africa and working in the STD clinic and demonstrated that um, PSA was a pretty good marker for prostatitis. And of course, that we know that anyway. But the urologists have totally forgotten that it is and uh, ignored it. The, they're so obsessed with, with diagnosing prostate cancer early. And of course, we know in, it is a very bad marker of prostate cancer because the lethal form of prostate cancer expresses much less of it than does the sort of the so-called false positive uh, cancer that won't kill you. And so, but the thing is, men have a raised PSA at, these were 25-year-olds down the gold mine, but there were also We've now had big studies in, in Boston, uh, not, uh, um, Baltimore and in uh, uh, Sweden demonstrating that at the age of 40, uh, 40 to 50, there's men who have a, a, a raised PSA. PSA at that age is more predictive of death 20 years later from cancer than it is at 60. And so it's the inflammation that's been set up that is actually contributing to the cancer development. And it's the driving force that keeps it going. And of course, w this is why I brought out this discussion about inflammation and cancer. I was taught as a, a medical student, because I saw the few remaining leftover osteo, chronic osteomyelitis that came from inadequate antibiotic treatment for, of osteomyelitis that ended up with osteosarcoma. We then had helicobacter and stomach cancer, osteoclitis and colon cancer. I made this point about prostatitis and prostate cancer, which got me sacked from the ICRF because they th thought it was a total waste of time uh, 20 years ago. Uh, mastitis and breast cancer has never really been uh, 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 hypothesized, but I think it is actually uh, demonstrable through the data on uh, breast density, and I'll show you some data on that. And bronchitis and lung cancer has never really been thought of as the infectious promotion of the mutation uh, uh, of, um, that is induced by the, the carcinogens. They were all focusing on the carcinogens. So uh, here's the, the most convincing data about breast cancer. Uh, this is vitamin D <coughs> seasonally measured the, uh, across the seasons and cor correlated with breast density. And you see when the vitamin D is lowest, the breast density is its highest. And breast density, high breast density is a predictive factor for, for um, breast cancer. And so whether it is due to inflammation in the breast, I don't know, because I've not, not really been involved in the breast field. But I, I think this is a really good demonstration of a potential vitamin D intervention in prevention of breast cancer. So let's just look at the data about prostate cancer. Um, prostate cancer and circumcision, no one really sort of took it very seriously. But there's actually uh, five papers that I've looked at. And the meta-analysis, a, a risk of 13% reduction, not very great, but it's statistically significant with the, those sort of numbers. Uh, and in fact, it's not much worse than the, 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 the big studies on uh, cervix cancer and male circumcision. Um, so th I think it's a real factor. Um, and if we go around the world, uh, of course, what's interesting is that uh, America, of course, does circumcision on 90% of its uh, newborn babies, so the, 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 the number is falling now. Uh, but they are proselytizing circumcision for Africa, a solution for AIDS, uh, when most of the data about circumcision in cervix cancer is actually demonstrating it's a 
combined situation due to hygiene and access to running water. And this is demonstrated in Brazil, in India, and in China, where they've got very good data that the, the benefits of circumcision are not seen when, when there's adequate access to, to hygiene and, and sanitary f facilities. But we're not getting those in Africa. We're all, they're all being told to get circumcised. Uh, it's really very important, this, this data, because it's demonstrated this issue of the anaerobes under the foreskin and in, in the presence of inadequate hygiene. Now, if you think about anaerobes, once they're under the foreskin, the urethra is, is not a, a, an anoxic, so it'll get up all the way up the urethra, and if the, the scars there from uh, STDs, they'll be, it'll be colonized. And so that, that undoubtedly could be why there is no data yet on any specific organism causing prostate cancer. There's multiple minor linkages with gonorrhea, the chlamydia, to, and even a new retrovirus, but they'd never really be able to pinpoint a one-to-one -one relationship. And I think that fits in quite well, as does this is the only study on use of condoms that, that uh, shows lack of condoms being associated with the risk. So uh, vitamin D. It's it's a, 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 a quite pretty large number of studies have been done and pretty unimpressive correlation demonstrated. <coughs> Interesting enough, uh, this WHO thing, uh, study which uh, did all this about cancer, the whole data on geography, they dismissed as, as uh, not really very in, in, entertaining. Yet in their own data, they have got such an amazing difference between the, uh, the northern countries and the southern countries that it's amazing that they, they drew the conclusion that they did. And, and more importantly, that they did their utmost to, to do, use pseudoscience statistics to dismiss the fact that there are now four studies showing that it's the lifelong index of sun exposure that's the more relevant thing to... to um, reduce the risk of prostate cancer and this would go along with the concept of reduction of a, 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 a low grade inflammation in causing bacteria such as anaerobes. Um, and of course the African story, I mean they, they've spent enormous sums in America from what I gather sort of analyzing around and around but not really paying any attention to the fact that the, they have vitamin D deficiency that the, that, and it takes six times the dose to, in order to get from uh, uh, here we see it goes up to 40 to 60 uh, they only get 10 uh, if you use that dose but if you give six times the dose you only get up to 30 but so um, and we saw yesterday that it takes uh, uh, two hours of sunshine exposure to get what the whites get in 30 minutes. So uh, here's the data on Caribbean in the, in the UK having uh, nearly three times the incidence of uh, prostate cancer. Interestingly, of course, there's the Asians who are as vitamin D deficient don't. Now this, you could argue, is against the vitamin D hypothesis, or you can say the Asians have, as the Japanese are known to have, this gene for 5-alpha uh, 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 reductase deficiency, which converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which is the, G, uh, the product that acts on the prostate. And this is thought to what be what is a major factor in the, the lower incidence of prostate cancer in, in the Japanese. So why do I think that the Olympics coming to London should become a, de uh, uh, a, a legacy for for putting this message back in the public domain. Um, the Peckham experiment and the, the, the years from 1900, I forgot to make my plug for my first slide, which of course shows a statue to Princess Alexandra, the uh, Danish princess who came to England to marry Edward VII and who was treated somewhat similarly to Lady Di, uh, but became a hero of the East End with her support of the Elephant Man. But more importantly, she bought as her diary the world's first sun lamp because her, her countrymen had just been awarded the Nobel Prize at the time of her wedding uh, for inventing this sun lamp. 
though he didn't know it was uh, doing vitamin D. But uh, so, and so I've been sort of educated in a place where, uh, although not many of the doctors told me about this, I gradually acquired its in the information. And I think that getting kids out in the outdoor exercise, but also adults, and uh, we have a very forward-thinking public health uh, uh, in the East End of London that has actually is running an over 50s Olympiad and I'm the second of the silver medalist in the cycling uh, but uh, and, and of course I, I, was, I was astounded but you know you, over 50 the number of people that run the marathon is over 50 is amazing it's, you, know, you can, can keep yourself going and I mean and an 80-year-old friend of my wife is the, used to be the world, the, no, the British uh, record holder for the 60-metre sprint. The, the, there is a lot of uh, athletics going on there. And I think keeping old people fit with, with sunshine and exercise is going to be the way forward, not to the more drugs. Um, and the, 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 from the point of view of our secret weapon, uh, not, uh, there's a few odd nationals from elsewhere, but uh, uh, why do the... Um, the Sun Belt countries always win more medals. Uh, it, it, this shows a German study from 1956 where the, they tr uh, t tested people throughout seven subjects throughout one year and showed the strength mounting in the summer months when they were exposed to. So vitamin D is a muscle enhancer. Uh, uh, it, it, I don't know about sunshine, but the exercise certainly does good things in the brain. And this is the most wonderful study in, in mice um, showing uh, in terms of the ability to do a, te uh, a test in the, uh, uh, the maze. It was a maze test, I think, where have I put it? Uh, anyway, uh, they got out of the maze if they'd been in a cage with a, with a running wheel. Uh, and they had much more DNA activity in their brain than they were sacrificed. And so uh, I've been working in schools using a, a very computerized index of fitness uh, that basically revolves around a thing called the beep test, where they um, measure your uh, uh, VO2 max and uh, your uh, ability to, to run in a sort of endurance type of way. And this index here is what, what one uses. And you see there's a, quite a range in these different schools. That, and it could certainly be used to, for competition between schools, because, but it, it's based on the, the median of that school. And I think that's the most important thing, is that the compositions that use large bodies of work uh, will, will get more people engaged, because everybody counts. But more importantly, and again, this is a very small number of data, those that were fittest had best examination results. And more importantly, those that improved their scores also, now that, well, again, they're not statistically significant, they're small studies. But the, the, the time for sports and schools exercise outside was all lost in the Thatcher era, and that was the cause of my writing my letters to the Lancet. But I think that we, we now have the opportunity to use this to get community-based sort of outside exercise as sort of a way of, uh, and perhaps using the Olympics every four years to run the competitions on the internet uh, to, to uh, do this. But at any rate, so the lessons from this <coughs> talk, I think, is that providing you accept <coughs> there's no cause of cancer that doesn't take less than 10 years and more, mostly 50 years to cause it. Then the concept of anaerobic colonization of poorly vascular scar tissue, creating a wound that doesn't heal, uh, sustained by intermittent or uh, sustained vitamin D deficiency, provides a rational explanation for how cancers in most organs could develop. Population-based interventions ensure lifelong, safe, intermittent sun exposure and exercise. A general approach to reducing health inequalities is clearly justified by data on low cancer rates. Uh, in farmers, builders, and golfers. And I think this is uh, very important. The, the data, uh, th uh, the GPs as gatekeepers to the NHS should be encouraged to maintain mass eye level of vitamin D in all their patients. 
and the data presented suggesting fitness in school correlates with academic performance, justifies more curriculum time for outdoor sport. And the internet-based fitness uh, indices of fitness population could provide the opportunity for four yearly schools, universities, and the over 50s Olympiads. Thank you. Uh, you. You put a very good case. Uh, it gets rather chicken and egg, doesn't it? Uh, particularly when you factor in um, uh, body mass or uh, obesity. Why? Well, uh, for a start, because there's, um, there's a recent paper that shows that uh, low level of vitamin D is associated with greater obesity or adiposity. Right. Both in black and white. Right. Now, uh, we know that um, obesity is uh, a risk factor for cancer and cardiovascular disease. Prostate and breast, and so forth, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it is the um, vitamin D level uh, predisposing to the obesity? Is it predisposing to the cancer, or uh, you know, which way around does this work? Well, the, it, we we know, for, and f uh, from yesterday's uh, presentations, it was really very interesting that they demonstrated that vitamin D supplementation in in pregnancy reduced substantially uh, the. Uh, diabetes of, of, of pregnancy and so there is presumably that is not an immune mechanism some relevant issue of a calcium interaction in the end uh, the hormone re a action of insulin and so on and, and lipid metabolism that may be influenced as well though it we have to remember that uh, sort of um, pancreatitis uh, sort of low-level pancreatitis, which is uh, a, a major factor for um, uh, diabetes, just as low-level prostatitis, could be enhanced by vi vitamin D deficiency. So uh, I, I don't rule out that, that being a possibility as well. Your group of Maasai tribesmen, presumably, um, were presumably also lactose tolerant. But you could go in Africa and find another group of tribesmen who were lactose intolerant uh, and throughout the same latitude. I wonder whether you made any comparisons about consumption of milk <clears throat> and also in this country and other countries, cow milk is not fortified with vitamin D, um, whereas uh, the new introductions of soy milk and so on are fortified. I, mean, I, I, I this NASA data was not mine, it was uh, Dr. Hollis's. Uh, and he, he was comparing the Maasai with uh, the Bantu and uh, urban Bantu and showed that there's with half that level. Uh, and so, you know, uh, but yes, milk may be, I don't know what buff buffalo milk or, uh, uh, it does with vitamin D, but it, presumably the, the, the cattle are very much healthier in the. Uh, outback uh, in, in Africa than they are in, uh, in, in Europe. I mean, my grandfather was uh, uh, instrumental in getting Koch to, to stand, to back down on the fact, his view that uh, uh, bovine TB was not pathogenic in man. He felt that was true for, for France because, of course, France has a lot more sunshine than we do. But he, my grandfather did his thesis on abdominal TB in uh, uh, children in Edinburgh. And there, there's, there, this was where they proved that it was the bovine TB was a major risk factor. And that's why, which, what led to the, the pasteurization of milk.